This is the Life at Work Conference podcast, an initiative of City Bible Forum. Hi, I'm Andrew Laird, host of the Life at Work Conference podcast, where we meet real workers wrestling with real workplace issues. Today, Christians and the arts. What influence can Christians have for good in this sphere? I think if great art can help us better understand what it means to be human um, in a world where pain and suffering are present, but also incredible joy and hope, um, then I think Christians have an enormous contribution to making that space. It's great to encourage them to find that as a kind of ministry, to find that as a way of um, helping people live their lives, perceive things. My guests today are Dr. Greg Clark, the former CEO of the Australian Institute of Music, and artist and designer Sharon Chung. I'm Andrew Laird, and this is the Life at Work Conference podcast. Poetry, literature, painting, sculpting, acting, the term the arts captures a a wide range of ways that humans creatively express themselves and tell stories. We all encounter the work of those in these creative industries every day. But unlike doctors or teachers or other helping or educating professions, the arts may seem like a less valuable place for a Christian to be. Uh, What good does a painting do for the world, we might ask? Or we might wonder, what does it mean to be a Christian actor or musician or artist? Should they only perform in Christian films, perhaps, or only write explicitly Christian music, only paint Christian scenes and so on? To consider all this and more, I'm joined by two people in this episode who both have a love and experience in the areas of music, literature and the visual arts. So welcome to the podcast, Greg and Sharon. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. Wonderful to have you both uh, with us considering this this quite diverse uh, area of uh, of work and many involves many people in many various different ways. Sharon, perhaps if I can start with you, tell us the areas of artistic expression that you find yourself most drawn to and how that manifests itself in your life. Yeah, well, currently, uh, visual art is probably one of my favourite expressions. Um, to take an idea and give shape to it using colours and shapes is just wonderful to me. So So how it manifests in my life, I love to paint, I love to take photographs. I also love to just go through life seeing different frames that are just beautiful and recognising it and giving thanks to God for that. Mm. Um, But another area I'm really drawn to are just words. So communication may be seen as a science, it's practical, it's functional. Um, But as an artist, I think the power of language can move us in ways that science maybe can't explain. Yeah. So how how would you like to uh, express words in poetry <laughs> or in uh, in articles or perhaps in short tweets? What's your yeah. What's your favourite expression of words? Look, everything and anything. Okay. So whether it's a blog article, whether it's an Instagram caption, whether it's just like a really nicely worded text that you know when I want to encourage somebody or mm. you know say um, a gentle word of of rebuke to somebody. I mm. think just the power of language can can do that and move us. Yeah, lovely. I love that. Um, what about you, Greg? Um, you've had roles in the music industry. You've also uh, written about the influence of the Bible on various artistic expressions in our world today. Uh, what draws you to those particular areas of the arts or others? Well, uh, I'm human. That's the first thing. <laughs> and human, human beings just love expression of every kind. We use all our senses to do it. Um, we're very creative people uh, or very creative species. Um, the most creative species by a very, very long way. Mm. It's just part of what it means to be human. So uh, I read a government record, report recently that said 98% of Australians are involved in the arts in some way whether that's watching you know, a TV show or singing in a choir or whatever it is. So I think it's just part of being human. Mm. Some people love it more than others. Um, for me, I, I've always loved stories, writing stories, reading stories ever since childhood. I play a few instruments. Um, I just really enjoy the process of creation, whether it's me or whether it's admiring other people's work. And I just think it's... Uh, you know, it, it's sort of the area that meaning and significance and heart and mind connect in most of our lives. Mm. 
There you go. So this is an important topic for us to consider, <laughs> particularly thinking about it from a Christian point of view and as Christians who might be engaged in the arts for their daily work. Uh, Greg, you've, you've touched on this just there a moment ago, that uh, art can move us uh, in, in various different emotional ways, whether it's a, a song that might do it or an image or even, Sharon, as you said, a text message, a carefully worded text can do it too. Uh, why, do, why is it that art... Uh, the arts can move us, Greg. I think it, I mean, just at a biological level, it does sustain us. You know, people will get in the car and put a song on because they felt bad and they, they know after they put the song on, they'll feel better. Mm. It's sort of, it's part, It's like self-medicating in some ways to, uh, to kind of uh, experience the arts. But I think it's also that we, we always looking kind of, we're looking for experiences to help us understand life and mm. to understand ourselves and, that's what the arts gives us. You know, we watch a dance, we watch a movie, we read someone's text. It's kind of reflecting back to us some kind of meaning or or value mm. that we think is important. And and that's that's what we do as as humans more than any other species. We're just seeking meaning all the time. And tell us, Greg. Um, we talked there about you know being moved by the arts. Are there particular visual artists or authors or musicians that you've got fond memories of being moved by their work? Any moments that you just think back to, wow, that was just a, a moment where that piece of music, that artwork just moved me? So many. Mm. Um, I remember reading John Donne's poetry at high school, year 10 or something like that, and his sonnet that starts, Batter my heart, three-personed God. Mm. And that line just electrified me. Um, one, because it was so kind of emotional and violent and shocking. Um, and then there's a rhythm to that line that kind of made it stick in my head. Um, and I thought, oh, wow, okay, that's Christianity kind of... Uh, jumping down my throat there, not just kind of <laughs> quietly sitting sitting in church to, you know, see if I'll pay attention. It was just an amazing moment of in my face, in my body kind of reaction to a, a kind of message expressed in words. Mm. Mm, no, that's lovely. Sharon, maybe you can help us just unpack this idea a little bit more that Greg's been talking about just there, the way that humans uh, are almost, we're wired to to need to express ourselves or or to have others express back to us uh, various ways of viewing the world and the arts in the way that it does that. Uh, what is it, and thinking, I guess, from a Christian perspective at this point here, what is it about, uh, about being human that makes us so susceptible to be moved by some artistic expressions? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think most people would agree that humans are capable of being moved by great art, and it doesn't matter what age you are, um, our emotions are a huge part of how we perceive the world um, and how we make decisions, how we relate to one another. Um, but I, I think at the core of it, I believe why humans are wired this way because we've been created for relationship. Mm. And firstly to our creator um, and then to one another. And I think the Bible, it does say that all human beings are made in his image. Mm. And I think our response to artistic expression has to do with that relational aspect of who we are fundamentally, mm. um, first to God and then to one another. Um, and the Bible itself has this language of rich metaphor and powerful language to move us. Mm. And I, I think it's very clear that God has intended this wiring for us um, in a relational sense. Mm, mm. So you talk about relationships there. We've been talking about this idea of, of art being able to move us and prompt a response in us, perhaps in a way that uh, other expressions are unable to do. So just unpack this a little bit more for us, if you could. Um, back to that question I raised right at the beginning. So what influence can a Christian have for good through an artwork or a song or a story? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think if great art can help us better understand what it means to be human mm. um, in a world where pain and suffering are present, but also incredible joy and hope, um, th then I think Christians have an enormous contribution to making that space um, mm. through art, through song, through story. Uh, first of all, we see the world from God's perspective. Mm. And we have the ability then to use art to direct others to the truth of things 
uh, whether it's exposing something that you know the the world sees as true but is not. Mm. Um, uh, for example, uh, you know someone may go through this life oblivious to their privilege, mm. um, but I think great art that disrupts that worldview, whether it's like creating within them a sense of unsettledness um, or discomfort, and moving them to change their lives to better the lives of others. I think there's something really magical and, and wondrous about that. Mm, mm. I like that language of art disrupting us, that it can stop us in our tracks and maybe make us pause and think about things, about ourselves, about the world in a way that maybe uh, we've not done before or, yeah. or another medium uh, was unable to do. Greg, maybe you could um, just reflect on this as well too, uh, that, that sense in which art can move us. And what place do you see for Christians being in the arts and using the various artistic expressions in order to do that kind of disruption that Sharon talks about? Well, I think Christians should definitely get involved with the arts if they're good at it. That's the thing. So mm. yeah. in that, to, have the, to have the impact, you need a certain level of skill and insight and creativity and so forth. Um, that's not to say that all of us can't write poetry for our bedside tables and for our families and so forth, but some of us will you know, go beyond that and be able to capture things that other people benefit from. So mm. I think where people are gifted in the arts, it's great to Christian people, it's great to encourage them to find that as a kind of ministry, mm. to find that as a way of um, helping people live their lives, perceive things, as Sharon said sometimes, I think it was Kafka who said that you know art should act on us like a misfortune, something that kind of went, oh gosh, you know that's terrible to find that out. Um, or it's so wonderful to find something out, you know, that, and, and obviously, you know, Christians believe there's a lot that's wonderful that we want to communicate with people. Mm. So I think, you know, it has to be the, the living of the Christian life, being a follower of Jesus, speaking the gospel, those things do well through the arts when the person who is make, is doing the artwork has those skills mm. and can communicate. It's a bit like a preacher, you know, preachers, there can be preachers who do an okay job of communicating a passage to people from from the pulpit. And then there are preachers who electrify people and transform mm. and change their lives because they're gifted in that area. Mm. I think the arts is the same. There are people who will do a lovely job of um, adding some adornment to the world, but then there's people who will really shock us and change us and take us somewhere that we wouldn't have been able to go ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's just push this a little bit further, Greg, if we can, that uh, say I'm a Christian person and do have some sort of skill um, and am working in that space and really do. do. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your confidence in me there. Um, but say I'm in that space and I think I really want to um, do work that is going to uh, move people to stop, to shock them perhaps, to disrupt them, to use the language you've both been using, to cause them to reflect on life and the meaning of life and the Creator even in ways that they might not otherwise do. How do they go about doing that? Is there a sense in which you know they have to be very explicit about uh, if you're writing a song, well, it's got to have Jesus in it. If you're writing a book, it's got to um, mention God by name. I mean, or or, or are there, is there a greater freedom to be able to do art that can move people that's not necessarily explicitly Christian? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any formula. Hmm. Um, and in fact, you know, the line between art and propaganda is kind of a thin one. Mm. Um, it doesn't work. I mean, propaganda kind of works, but it works in a way that we Christians don't want. Like, we don't want to coerce people into a view. We want them to be inspired and moved and changed in their hearts. Mm. So I think being honest to yourself as an artist is a really important thing. Um, honesty, being open to critique, being... Um, being uh, not too thick-skinned and not too thin-skinned so mm. that you can express yourself and be not be too kind of shocked and horrified when people react against your art or don't understand you. That's important. Um, but but also not kind of going back into your shell if you're, you're worried that, you know, you're going to be seen as uh, slightly off off pissed or something, you know, mm. not quite on the, on, <laughs> on the dial. Um, Artists need a degree of freedom and, you know, working in a music college as I have, it's something really, there's this really fascinating kind of 
combination of extreme discipline and extreme freedom in musicians. Mm. They have to be so disciplined to learn their instruments, to improve, but they also don't don't fit the system very well. Mm. And um, and I think if we want Christians to to give us gifts in the arts by doing their work, we have to kind of accept that they don't always fit the system very well. Mm, mm. There's there's shades of grey. There's nuance that we need to be able to sit comfortably with, and just give a, a give provide environments of openness um, and acceptance for people who, through their creativity, won't always follow the pathway of everyone else. Mm, mm. Sharon, what about for you? Um, I've seen some of your uh, your artwork, mm. and it's not necessarily explicitly Christian. And yet, presumably, through it, you are perhaps trying to evoke responses or thoughts in people's minds that might cause them to consider uh, the bigger questions of life, uh, what is behind this universe. Is that the case? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I had a friend comment to me very recently um, and say that hope is a very big theme Hmm. of, you know, just, just the art that I've been creating in the last little while. And I think what they were getting at was the fact that I I love to play with contrasts. Mm. I love how light brings out how dark darkness mm. is and, and vice versa. And so often I when I approach a painting, those those themes will just come through mm. through, you know, light and shade and all of that. And I think naturally we gravitate towards light. Um, so I don't necessarily have to paint a picture of, you know, Jesus on the cross with, you know, mm. bright lights behind him and, and all of that. Um, but even just that subtle use of colour, I think, mm. can, can be a way to express that. Yeah, yeah. Look, you've both given us uh, lots to consider already about the importance of the arts, the place for Christians in it. We're going to take a short break now, but when we come back, I want to consider with you both how Christians might navigate some of the unique challenges that come to being a Christian in the creative industry. So more on that with uh, Greg and Sharon in just a moment. How do you introduce yourself to others? You might use your job title, but is that who you are? Join Andrew Laird in a six-part online course which explores how your Christian identity shapes your working life as he guides you from the slavery of judging yourself by what you do towards delight in the identity God has given you. Go to citybibleforum.org slash I am what I do to access your free trial. Well, welcome back. I'm joined on this episode by Greg Clark and Sharon Chung and we're talking Christians in the arts. Um, I want to get your wisdom now from both of you on how Christians might uh, navigate some of the challenges of this industry. But just before we get into that, uh, thinking about some of your favourite creative expressions, whether it's a, a story or a song or an artwork or a performance, is, is there one that you know you think to yourself, "I wish I'd been responsible for that. I wish that was my work." Greg, ha <laughs> ha, so many. Um, <laughs> I, I think what I really admire is people's body of work. Like when people have been doing what they do for a long time, you look back and you think, "Wow, that's really added something to the world." So. I mean, novelists like Tim Winton here in Australia, mm. I, I've followed his work since he began in his 20s, and I feel he's done an incredible amount to kind of shape how Australians think about themselves and to include in that kind of spiritual dimension. Mm. Um, music, I mean, yeah, there's so much wonderful choral music that I, I just admire and would have loved to have written and sung. and. Um, and then because I'm a middle-aged white man, you too, of course, you know, the, the, uh, <laughs> their, their body of work and, and their consistency in pushing people to, you know, not leave out the spiritual dimension of life, I, it's no secret I've got a lot of time for them. <laughs> I like how you've uh, successfully navigated there that you didn't have to narrow it down to one thing, but encompass well, it no. in a, a body of no. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sharon, what about yourself? Oh, I can narrow it down to one word. Okay, yeah. right. Um, I, I'd i love to make art that would inspire curiosity. And for mm-hmm. me, that one painting that 
inspires curiosity is um, Edward Hopper's Nighthawks. Okay, describe yeah, it for us, can you, for those not yeah, familiar with totally. it? Yeah, totally. I mean, Google it. But it's an oil painting um, which features a scene with four patrons in a late night diner, presumably somewhere in New York or Brooklyn. Mm. Um, but looking at it, you just can't help but create stories for what's happening in that scenario. Mm. Um, and the colours that he's used just evoke this air of mystery and it's just mm. super inviting and I I wish I'd painted it. Mm, mm. So it, it invites you in. It uh, it almost gives you permission to imagine what's what's going on in that right. diner, what's being said between the people. Yeah, or not being or said. Or not being said. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. Now, thank you, thank you both for, the, for sharing that. That gives us a little insight into, uh, into your passions and interests in this space too. Look, let's turn to some of the unique challenges that uh, Christians might face if they're working in this space. Uh, I can think of a few, a few possible scenarios, but Greg, uh, what are some of the challenging moral or ethical issues that you have encountered Christians facing, or perhaps even you yourself have experienced in in this space of work? Yeah, I don't know that they're that different for the artists than they are for other Christians, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, It's sort of the the challenge of how to be yourself when you're not being yourself. Like it's sort of how you're playing a role when you're performing. Mm. You're, it's part of you. It's part of yourself. You're exposing part of yourself. Um, but see, preachers, for example, are doing the same thing when they preach from the pulpit. Mm. Um, there's a sort of perform- performance aspect of living that we're all involved with in one way or another. But I guess you're sort of getting at, you know, the um, there are challenges for people who are successful in the arts in that they start to get a lot of fame and attention. Mm. Um, and there are challenges of people who are unsuccessful and they become bitter and twisted. Yeah. So there's kind of issues there. Um, I guess all the usual moral issues that human beings face of you know sex, drugs and rock and roll, <laughs> how do you go through all of that? Um, I think the key is remembering that you are first and foremost a disciple of Christ mm. in every situation you're in. Mm. And, um, you know, it's corny... It's very corny, and it was a huge kind of commercial industry. But the question, "What would Jesus do?" is pretty a pretty good question to ask. To be honest, in whatever part of life you're in, whether you're acting in a film or you're writing a mm. song or you know recording a podcast, like yeah, try to try to imagine yourself as a a little Jesus, a child of Jesus, and what, what would Jesus do is probably the best way forward. Yeah, yeah, Sharon. Are there particular challenges that you've encountered or as you've been ministering to people who might work in this space that they've had to wrestle through or you've had to wrestle through because of working in this uh, industry? Yeah, I I, I completely agree with um, what Greg's shared there. It's in some ways the issues are are kind of present in in any industry. Mm. Um, But if I compare my experience in sort of the more creative stuff versus my time in finance, mm. um, the the demands that I think society has on those who have decided to have make a career out of, you know, being creative and, mm. and expressions, um, it, it's just a lot more personal mm. than, than, say, um, in the corporate world. And I think when you are giving so much of yourself in that way mm. um, without having strong um, foundations or anchor points that really anchor you to Jesus. Um, you can sometimes go too far um, and without good Christian community sometimes um, to tell you when you've overstepped a mm. moral or an eth- ethical boundary, um, it, it can, you know, for the sake of art, like, you know, how long is a piece of string? How far do you go? Mm. I think that's that's mm. a present issue. Mm. There's a real sense in which you leave much more of yourself on the page or on the canvas yeah. uh, in these sort of creative industries than you do, as you say, working in, in finance. So, uh, Jaron, then what sort of wisdom would you give a younger Christian version of yourself or <laughs> others that you might uh, be ministering to who are wrestling with this in terms of how the faith might help them navigate some of those challenges? Yeah, well, I firmly believe that any sort of work we do as a Christian is is a bit of a team effort. You really do need a good church community um, behind you to help you navigate those moral and ethical dilemmas. Mm. Um, the advice that I would give would be, I think, to 
when you start having doubts about, you know, should I take this job mm. or should I immerse myself in this environment where I'm the only Christian and maybe don't have that willpower to, you know, stick to your own morals and stuff, um, to have a Christian community behind you and around you is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Greg, anything that you can add to that, particularly, I guess, as uh We've been touching on this already, uh, and you saying it there in terms of that, what would Jesus do? Are there particular spaces in the creative arts that Christians should uh, avoid altogether, certain roles, certain performances, certain express- artistic expressions that you would uh, counsel them away for, or, or other, other counsel that you might give? Yeah, I think it, it's complex. I wouldn't want to sort of... Um make a formula to apply but i agree mm. with what sharon said is that that having a community of people who re- respect and admire what you do but also are, are able to hold you to account i think that's the thing you've got to keep your conscience um sensitive and keep it tested and and christian friends are a great way to do that uh, christian church community you know you can't you can't beat it for keeping people you know thoughtful about the decisions they're making rather than just drifting into things Mm. um but you know to to sort of use a theological word i think um it's really good in the arts to sort of be eschatological Mm -hmm. about what you do what do you mean by that (laughs) i mean by that you know eschatology is the kind of the study of where we're all headed Mm. uh, in jesus you know headed to judgment headed to um what will happen how how our lives will be accounted for and I had a friend who's a really accomplished writer who said he's always asking himself if I stand before Jesus on Judgment Day and he reviews my work, hmm. you know, how proud will I feel? How how much will I have let him down? How much do I can I can I kind of explain what I was doing? And I think that's just without without it kind of becoming a you know, obsessive, you know, neurotic kind of thing for. Hmm. An artist, I think keeping that long-term perspective is really helpful. That when I emerge from this film, or when I emerge from this um, tour, or whatever I'm doing, and I sit back at the end of my time and think, what would what would God make of all this? Mm. What's He going to say? And then try and bring that kind of longer-term perspective into what you're doing in the moment, because I think getting caught up in the moment is a really common kind of temptation for people in the arts. Mm, that's very helpful. That eschatological perspective and bringing that to the the Doesn't work roll that off we the produce. tongue, but it's kind of helpful. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Look, one final question for you both, uh, and maybe Greg, I'll I'll start with you. Um, we've been talking a lot here about those Christians who are in the arts and navigating it as Christian person. But what about the wider Christian community? Are there particular ways that the the church more broadly could support Christians in the arts in, in light of some of the challenges that they might face or in light of some of the opportunities that they have? Yeah, that's a great question along the lines of what Sharon was saying about needing a community. Yeah. I think I'd say um, it's really important to start from a positive position about the arts value um, as a church community. Mm. Um, you know, we all benefit from the arts so much we sing a, a hymn in church we look at a stained glass window we read a book we mm. like and those things it can you, we can take a lot of that for granted so i think remain starting from a positive position about the value of people whose labor and gifting is in the arts is a really positive really important thing um and then i guess i'd say repeat what i said before about not expecting artists to necessarily be able to go with the flow yeah. like other people to allow enough room for them to feel accepted and welcome um even if they are a bit different to the vast majority of a church community or they don't quite you know turn up to the same things or or use the same language yeah uh, I, I think that acceptance is so important i when i was a young just out of uni uh, Christian thinking about how to serve God, I had a chance to talk with the the New Testament, um, kind of eminent New Testament lecturer Don Carson, mm. uh, American evangelical lecturer, and and I'd been doing a bit of writing at the time, and I said to him like, "Is there any point in me writing a novel? Mm. Can a Christian like is that a good use of my time?" Um, and to his great credit, in my view, he said, "If you've got to write a novel, write a novel." Mm. Like we need we need it. We need you all. We need 
the artists, we need the novelists, we need the musicians, we need them all to help build up this body of Christ and to reach out from the body of Christ to the world. I think if he'd been negative at that point and said, oh, look, there are better things to do with your time, that could have been quite a turning point for me. But mm. his positivity, even though I haven't yet finished that novel, <laughs> was, you know, really, really inspired me to think about my gifting and think about how I would serve the Christian world. So I'm forever grateful for that throwaway comment that he made among the hundreds of conversations he had on on a conference, you know, one day in 1993 or whenever it was. Mm. Oh, what a lovely story and what an encouragement, I think, to the wider church to to have that uh, have that perspective and that view on the, the arts. Sharon, how about yourself? Are there ways that you can think of that will be uh, wonderfully supportive that the church could give and offer to those in this space? Yeah, well, first of all, make space for artists. How do you do that? Yeah, I mean, I think... Greg has mentioned a few of those things already. Like within the Christian gathering, mm. there are spaces where artists can um, contribute, whether it's songwriting, whether it's, you know, creating lovely designs, you know, for, for a sermon series or whatever. Um, so create space and invest in the artists mm. in your church community. Uh, but I think following that, a very practical thing is actually support it, not just creating space, but actually supporting it perhaps financially even, and not expecting artists just to do it because they can. Yes. Um, that's yes. a really big one. And and I have been a benefactor of um, my own Christian community who have supported and, you know, bought art off me and whatever. Um, and, and I think that is the part of the way in mm. terms of um, nurturing uh, artists to emerge from the Christian community. Yeah, yeah. And given what we said earlier in this conversation about art being able to move us or stop us in our tracks and reflect on something in a fresh way, then it makes so much sense for the Christian community to give the space, as you say, there to people in the arts because uh, they can serve the church wonderfully in, in helping us think about things that we might be so familiar with uh, in, a, in a fresh way. They're, they're wonderful uh, examples and suggestions from you both to, to close this episode with. And so, Sharon and Greg, uh, I personally have found this a really refreshing and uh, eye-opening insight into industries that we might not often reflect on too much in Christian circles. So thank you both so much for your time and your wisdom. It was good fun. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. 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 Thank you both. Well, look, be sure to join us for our next episode as I'm joined by two academics to reflect on imposter syndrome. What is it? How common is it in our daily work? And how does the Christian faith help us overcome it? It's going to be a very personal but important conversation to have. Until then, I'm Andrew Laird, and you've been listening to the Life at Work Conference podcast. The Life at Work Conference podcast is produced by City Bible Forum. To find out more and register for the conference, go to citybibleforum.org slash lifeatworkconference. Enjoyed this podcast? Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing and leaving a rating so others can find us too. Join us next time on the Life at Work Conference podcast with Andrew Laird. Andrew Laird.